Is an Elon Musk mid-journey partnership in the works? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off the day with some juicy gossip. Yesterday, I saw a couple people tweet something like this from Doge Designer, breaking, X is in talks with mid-journey for a potential partnership. Now, my first response was to do what I always do when I see some rumor on Twitter slash X, which is to assume that the source was someone completely making this up. But in this case, turns out, that was not the source. The source was Elon Musk himself. When ex-user Misha Turtle Island had a chance to ask a question of Elon Musk on a Twitter Spaces, Musk said, We are in some interesting discussions with MidJourney and something may come of that. But either way, one way or another, we will enable AI art generation on the X platform. Now, Elon also went on to say that Grok 1.5 would be coming soon, which is something we've heard from him before. Still, by far, the biggest conversation was around the implications of a MidJourney partnership. Andrew Curran tweeted, If these talks between Elon and MidJourney really do end up incorporating MJ into Grok, then X instantly becomes one of the biggest image gen sites in the world, and MidJourney shifts from being stranded on Discord Island to being instantly accessible to half a billion users. John Finger tweets, Maybe I'm way off, but this feels like a much different conversation than putting images on X. David Holes has mentioned a few times they need much more 3D data for MidJourney's 3D and World Engine. Elon Musk has mentioned making a future game engine using their massive 4D data collection, but their current generations are ugly and boring. That collaboration seems like a more clear value to both parties. It seems to me the only reason X would be interesting in that equation might be as an eventual distribution platform so MidJourney can pass some of the distribution development onto X, who gets to further their everything platform concept. Bilawal Sidhu writes, Big if true, let's imagine for a second, shall we? Collaborative mid-journey generation on X would be wild, like Discord parties on steroids. No blank screen problem because prompts can be remixed, content can evolve with full provenance. You can see memes being birthed in real time, like Photoshop tennis on steroids. It would inject a stream of visual umami through the X network. XAI tie-in to tackle multimodal AI creation and assistance. X brings some LLM and vision chops to the party to go up against Runway, OpenAI, Pika, Google, etc. Give real content creators the controlled creation experience we so badly desire. Versus playing slot machine AI all day, re-rolling prompts and picking a few to post on social media. Mimetic warfare demands real weapons, so they must be built. Which also means deep partnership on identifying generative content on X. Deepfakes and bots have to be top of mind for Elon given the upcoming elections. Midjourney is one of the best image generators out there and lets you generate a variety of political figures and celebrities, creating very convincing imagery often indistinguishable from reality. He also talks about the idea of anyone on X being able to make an AI avatar picture. And again, overall, there's just a lot of excitement about this possibility, even if it's just Elon errantly talking. Now, let's move over to politics for a moment. It is, of course, in the US a presidential election year, which means basically no one expects anything to happen. When it comes to AI, though, politicians seem to at least be focused on looking like something will happen. House Speaker Mike Johnson and Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries announced yesterday that they were creating a new bipartisan task force to explore potential legislation around artificial intelligence. As Reuters puts it bluntly, efforts in Congress to pass legislation addressing AI have stalled despite numerous high-level forums and legislative proposals over the past year. The task force, Reuters writes, will include, quote, guiding principles, forward-looking recommendations, and bipartisan policy proposals developed in consultation with committees. Now, why should you take this any more seriously than any of the variety of plans that have been proposed in the past, many of which have also argued themselves to be bipartisan? Ultimately, any legislation needs the support of leadership to be discussed, much less voted upon in the House. With the House leaders getting involved, it potentially represents something a little bit different than just two senators or two congresspeople getting together and trying to shape the conversation with their own comprehensive legislation, which they know is never going to go anywhere. Now, I am still a little bit skeptical that we'll see much action here, but it shows that if nothing else, this remains an issue that they at least feel like they need to give lip service to. However, as the D.C. establishment, at least from a political perspective, kind of dithers, the military establishment is doing no such thing. Alexander Wang, the CEO at Scale yesterday, writes, Big announcement today. Scale will be collaborating with the U.S. Department of Defense on a testing and evaluation framework for LLMs and military use. We are honored to partner on this framework. I believe this is one of the most critical topics of our time. The U.S. needs to utilize this technology thoughtfully within our military, but we must also set the example for the world and what safe deployment looks like. We want to collaborate closely with the national security community, the AI safety community, and the broader world to ensure we arrive at thoughtful outcomes. We do not take this responsibility lightly. At the same time, deterrence is an American imperative, and the U.S. must set the example for how this technology will affect the future of the world. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Even as there is a metaphorical arms race going on among the big AI labs and the big tech companies, there is a literal AI arms race going on among major global militaries. Lastly today, some interesting analysis from Henley Wing at Bloomberry. They looked at publicly available Upwork job posting data to try to understand if and how any jobs were being affected by the introduction of LLMs. They write, 
I took the 12 most popular job categories in Upwork and analyzed the 84-day moving average of the number of jobs for that category. To my pleasant surprise, most of the job categories actually had an increase in the number of jobs since ChatGPT was released. However, there were three exceptions. The three categories with the biggest declines included customer service, where those jobs declined 16%, translation, where those jobs declined 19%, and writing jobs, which declined 33%. Now, on the one hand, the caveat to this is that it's just one source. It's just a freelancer marketplace, even though it's a big one. But on the other hand, this is not theoretical job displacement later on. This is immediate job displacement right now. 33% is not a small number for fewer writing jobs. And what's more, it completely tracks from what people might use ChatGPT for. The thing to me that's interesting is that we're starting to get actual numbers around this, not just predictions of what those numbers will be in the future. So that is certainly something that I am going to watch closely. For now, however, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.